Hello there. I wanted to spend a few minutes just talking um, to everyone about the iPad as a productive main computer where you don't need a Mac anymore and what that future is starting to look like now with iOS 9. Uh, so I've been doing this for the past couple days here and I've been using the iOS 9 betas. But now that iOS 9 is rolled out and the app updates are coming, I've been getting a glimpse into what the future could look like, and it's quite nice. Uh, so, um, I'm using an iPad Air 2 as my main computer at work. I've done that since iOS 9 came out, so I've had two full work days on that setup. And it's pretty awesome. So, I have a standing desk, and I work standing up, and uh, I've got a little stand for my iPad, and I use the Apple Bluetooth keyboard with it. And with iOS 9, the keyboard support is just outstanding, and it's only going to get better as more and more apps start to utilize that functionality as well. So what the keyboard's enabled uh, us to do now with the iPad is to make navigation fast and speedy. I can use the familiar uh, keyboard shortcuts like Spotlight to jump in between apps. I can use Command Tab to get between apps. I can't yet use the command, I can command tab to go forward, but no backwards entry like you can on the Mac. But that's not a huge deal. Um, also, the spotlight would be nice if the arrow keys worked after you did your search. But um, again, not a huge deal. The, um, the keyboard support has made it pretty fantastic to just get around your iPad and be able to um, not be slowed down by, by anything. The next part of the multitasking is the split screen. And part of the reason I've been doing this is to, first off, see what it's like to use the iPad as a computer, but secondly, to see, will this iPad Pro be something worth considering as a main computer? And so far, I think the answer is yes. Uh, one of the things that I, I just was just delighted with the other day at work was I was able to be watching a webinar uh, on um, the Internet of Things in the industrial workplace in picture-in-picture -picture mode while taking notes in a kind of iPhone-sized app on one side of the screen while doing work on another uh, thing in a, on the more fuller screen part of the iPad. And I can only just imagine what the screen size of an iPad Pro would allow that to do as far as just breathing room. And even on iPad Air, that was a great experience with the larger screens being even better. So you are able to do two to three things at once. You're able to be educated with you know um, educational videos or whatnot uh, while working on a main app and having a reference app next to it. And that is really all I need to do at work as far as apps open at the same time. And in fact, I've noticed myself being more focused on the task at hand because of the focus on you've got this one app with this one reference app and you are really, you're working on that thing. You are focused on that one thing. There's not a billion things in your face um, perhaps getting in your way, where on the iPad metaphor of uh, multitasking, it, it really just gives you what you need to work on. And I've been going through the App Store, going through different uh, things I used to do on my Mac, and have found solutions for pretty much everything I used to do on my Mac. The only thing I think I'll still pull out my Mac for is using Final Cut Pro. Even though there are some movie uh, video editing applications, I think Final Cut Pro 10 is still leaps and bounds uh, uh, beyond whatever I'll be able to do on the iPad as of this time. I'm kind of hopeful Apple makes a Final Cut Pro for iPad, but I'm not holding my breath. Um, hopefully next year though. Hopefully that comes. That is kind of one thing that um, I can do simple projects, but uh, the stuff I do at work, I like to have the control Final Cut Pro allows. But beyond that, um, we use Citrix to log into all sorts of Windows apps at work. 
and that's been working really well so I can use our CRM system and shop management system right from the iPad and I'm able to move files from the iPad into there and out and that all works really nicely. The keyboard support's great and there's even be some way to use an iPhone as a trackpad within that which will be curious. Um, so that's great. I'm using ByWord for uh, just text entry and uh, creating notes and things like that. Um, and then I'm using iTeleport now as a way to use my keyboard on the Mac that I've stolen the keyboard from. So I have a Bluetooth keyboard that used to be paired to my iMac, but now it's paired to my iPad. So I'll load up iTeleport and whenever I need to do a quick thing on the Mac, I'll just load it up to use the Bluetooth keyboard on that iMac, which is kind of an interesting way to do it. Um, printing from the iPad, um, we've got an IP printer in the office that is not air print enabled. So Printer Pro from uh, Riedel, I, I keep, I, I'm not gonna pronounce that name, but Riedel, I believe is the name of the company, um, has worked gangbusters for that. So I'm on the same Wi-Fi network as that printer, enter the IP address, and I can now print any document um, to that printer. And one of the great things that I noticed creeping up, and I think it started in iOS 8, is this document picker. So this document picker is simply amazing. This is one of the things in iOS that has made it so fluid to get around and deal with the, the, the fact that you have to use files between different things. So this document picker, I'm able to pull up files from Dropbox, from iCloud Drive, from OneDrive, from Google Drive, all the different storage systems, the file systems per se, that I used to use on my Mac are now available for the stocking picker. So this is system-wide available and has made, it's one of the things that's made this possible to use an iPad as a computer. So when I'm in Safari and I need to upload a file, I can use this document picker to grab something from iCloud Drive, from Dropbox, and upload it there. And I'm able to add attachments through email through that same mechanism. This document picker is amazing. It's made things so wonderful to deal with files on the iPad. I feel like I actually have a file system on the iPad. And that file system is not a finder, but it's iCloud Drive is is one folder and within that folder I've got all the different iCloud Drive folders and Dropbox is the other big one and having that iCloud uh, that document picker is is uh, amazing it really is um, so beyond that I've got Pixelmator and the ability to work with that on the iPad Air is um, allows me to create our print advertisements through Pixelmator and all the Adobe apps and um, you know even using uh, jumping in the iWork to do their uh, quick mask I'm able to copy images from there into Pixelmator and um, when when the tools in there don't work so you're able to you know use several apps uh, when needed to get a job done and I have been uh, blown away with the office apps um, they've been updated for the split view uh, running two apps side by side iWork hasn't yet um, not sure why Apple really needs to support their own features in the OS. So right now, if you want to use uh, Split View, that is the two apps at a time, uh, you're going to be using Microsoft Office, and they are really solid apps. And best of all, if you're trying to, if you're using the iPad as your main computer, those apps are free of charge. There are some pro features, but nothing worth spending ten bucks a month on in my mind. So if you don't need access to the desktop apps, you are pretty much golden because uh, you have access to uh, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, uh, you know, Outlook, and all the other apps for free of charge. That is pretty phenomenal. Um, uh, also, in my toolbox I'm using for work is PDF Compressor. That's so when I export out uh, stuff from uh, pages, I can get that file size down to something um, more appropriate than, than it is now. Um, then, of course, PDF Pen to mark up uh, PDFs as they come in. 
we use um, MailChimp to do our emails here. And the MailChimp apps, quite frankly, are pretty terrible. But what's been pretty great is the website, uh, perfectly functional on the iPad with Safari. So I've been using that. And as I've been using, um, something I've noticed is the home screen metaphor on the iPad has made it good for reminding me of all the different web apps that I should be visiting on a somewhat frequent basis for work that I may at times neglect. So I've got admin panels and different things uh, that are on my home screen that reminds me to jump in there to get that task done. So uh, MailChimp is one of those apps um, and then our websites have their own different admin panels and Basecamp has a fairly good application and their website works as well, really well um, as well. Um, I sh should not have said well so many times. Um, but there's all sorts of amazing tools. And as far as using the iPad as a computer, audio editing and publishing a podcast is mostly feasible from an iPad. Now, I do most of my shows through Google Hangouts, which I can attend but not host from an iPad, which is a major bummer. But once that video is recorded, I can download that file um, into the iPad using Goodreader. I can extract that audio um, from that uh, video using an app called the Audio Extractor. It works really, really well. Um, on the Mac, I would have used QuickTime to export that as an audio file. And then from there, I can throw it into Twisted uh, Wave um, to start editing that audio. And I'll use Audio Share to as a kind of hub of different uh, bumpers and things required for the podcast. So I've got my intro and outros and things like that. Then I'm able to copy into Twisted Wave from there. And um, it all works really well. Um, it, it, I mean, we'll upload right in the Dropbox from there and do all the audio work right from the iPad. So uh, the only glitch and hangup I've got is editing the RSS feed and uh, the iPad file system is different from the Mac file system and the file system required for RSS feeds is the Mac one. So that is a stumbling block I have not found a solution yet for. If you're using Libsyn though, um, direct upload, uh, from the iPad would solve all that and you wouldn't need to deal with creating the RSS feed. So there's definitely ways around that for sure. Um, there's also um, a lot of image editing applications that are going to come in handy as I do this. So my consensus after using the iPad for a couple days here and I'll learn more and more over the next uh, couple weeks and months getting into the iPad Pro once that comes out that uh, I'm pretty sold on this experience. It's allowed me to be more focused in on the task at hand. It's really great to just, um, when you don't need the keyboard, just grab your iPad to get some stuff done. When you get called into someone's office to grab your iPad and you can be going through you know quick emails as you're in there. and the flexibility and mobility of the iPad really shines. Um, so the iPad Pro, I think is gonna be a really solid device for a lot of people. And I think this is just stage one, that in a few years, it's gonna develop even more and some of the things that are a little bit cumbersome will become um, will become really fluid really fast and it's it's an exciting future because um, we've got this iPad starting to finally develop as something different from the iPhone and we have the Mac existing and will be around for a long time but the iPad is the I guess dare say the next uh, the next personal computer for most people I'd say and iOS 9 brings it there and does it in a really intuitive way and a way that people may become more proficient using computers. 
Um, something I didn't mention is how awesome it is to just hold down the command key and seeing all the keyboard shortcuts available for that application. So as you're using applications, you're able to learn, learn the keyboard shortcuts that you need to use and it's pretty great in that way. So the iPad is a full computer. I am sold, I'm excited by this future and I will be getting an iPad Pro as soon as they are available and 128 gigabyte selling growth please. So I'm really happy with that. I don't think a smart keyboard cover will be in my future. I love using the Apple Bluetooth keyboard and I will probably just get the regular smart cover as Apple said they're going to release for that. And um, yeah, that, that, that looks pretty great. Um, the, and the pen is something I'm not even sure if I'll get on day one either. Um, I probably will get that at some point, but for what I do, a pen may not be necessary, but uh, I'll probably end up with one. Um, now the curious thing is what I will do with, I've got an iPad mini two, and I've got the Air two, so, or iPad mini three and the Air two. So as I get the Pro, I'll be curious how my uses of these devices will change. Um, and if there will be, if it will make sense to actually have the iPad Pro always on my desk as a desktop kind of iPad and use the iPad Air alongside with that or what, um, what I'll do. So juggling around three different sized iPads, um, I'll be curious what, what happens there. So that, that'll be another topic of discussion for a future segment. So um, thanks for watching this video about using the iPad as a main computer. I think Apple's done a really good job with it and I think there's some more that can be done, but overall it's a really good first step. And um, feel free to submit any questions in the comments or send those that feedback in. My Twitter handle is at T Chatton and would love to get that conversation started about using the iPad as your main computer. Um, stay tuned for more, uh, more uh, discussions like this. Bye-bye.